straight line. But you can see these are real hard studies. You can see that the configuration is the same, and you also can see that it's twisting. You can see that definitely on the far left, it's twisting just like my form. It's the vortex. The inside of the heart is vortexing in the, the geometry. Okay, that is, okay, that's all right. And here I go again. Here's the inside. I showed you that. Uh, and here it is. It twists 40 degrees. The heart twists 40 degrees, and, and then a less than one second the heart beats. You know. And what's so interesting is that when it moves at 30, it moves at 40 degrees. It's 36 times. This point is 0 0.36. There's 36 coming in again. That's how long it takes the heart to get to the twist. Okay, so you have to study things. You have to study things that are also in the books that the scientists have found. This is the shape, the geometric organic shape, artistically found of the fifth chamber. This is the shape of the fifth chamber. It's about the size of your little finger, uh, and it's uh, contracting at the top and expanding way up like this, and then it contracts. This is the shape of the fifth chamber that Russ and I talked about, geometrically found. Okay, so uh, this is showing how two vortexes come in and don't clash. I found out why the form doesn't, why the blood that comes in doesn't clash with the blood that's coming down, which I don't have time to talk about. But these are the layers that I showed you. Uh, these are real researches in heart, so it's eight layers. And then it, it reverses like I showed you uh, with the drawing or with the actual cones. It shows you how it twists. Okay, here are, here's the left and right ventricle right off the internet on CAT scans that have been done by the doctors. Okay, and here's the 13 sided form, one side the other. Here is the seven sided form in faces only. And if I spin it, you can see the etheric. That is the etheric you're seeing. And here it is geometrically to make sure that the bell is correctly drawn and so forth, that it's really like the, the video shows you. And then we get to the bell of incarnation. Rudolf Steiner says in both, in many books, uh, including this one, he says it in this book, and he says it in uh, At the Gates of Spiritual Science, and inside here he says that. What does the bod astral body look like? And he says, they're bells. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one. This book says that human beings in the making who initially have only an astral body appear to the eye of the seer as bell shapes moving downwards at tremendous speeds. And it's all going through the astral all over, looking for, according to the center, looking for the correct parents, the correct environment, and the correct place to be able to do your work when you come here. So, the bell, the seven-sided form, which is a time being, this is based on time. This is not a flow form. A flow form it only goes in one direction. But an air form, an astral form, this is both astral and etheric, okay, is time. This is a time form. And what that means is, is that it's between, it's an interval. It's between two notes. It is the place where the, the flow of the uh, veils, okay, of the arrhythmus are flowing. Okay, so... Uh, here again is the bells again. Here's the shape that you see. Uh, here's other Egyptian carvings that show the incarnation. And here is the capital, which is five, around the, the base, around the column itself, and seven at the top. Here's the five and seven again. So, in this process, I found a geometry, okay, this is the end, I could go on and on, but this is the, this is the ultimate end in the geometry, is I found this this geometry, and I have to say, and I have to say this again, that this is not, and I'm not trying to say this through inflation. I'm not trying to build myself up at all in any of this because I've, I'm in a stream of some kind, okay, and the stream is flowing and I'm in it. And, I, and when I am in it, I see things, I pick them up, okay, but I'm not always in it, but usually in a lecture I am, and also in my work when I'm heavily into it. And in that stream, I found this form. And this is the two circles that are in the human heart. And I'll show you how that's done. If you look at the human heart, and also you know that the human heart has a cube in it. Rudolf Steiner also says that in the human body, and here's the form, there's a cube in the middle. He says that in the human heart, there is a cube. And it carries our karma. 
I got another quote. And the two circles, the, from the top of the cube to the bottom of the cube, there is a triangle. And the triangles turn into circles when you spin them. And these are the two circles. So all I had to do was to take these two circles, and the, the, the uh, cube is root 3. All I have to do is collapse them, there they are. This is the floor plan of the real piano. This is how it's done. <coughs> Pretty cool, yeah? <laughs> anyway, so what I did was, I drew this up exactly like it's supposed to be, and this is what I came up with. This is the first geometry of this kind ever in the history that we could take five and develop it into seven. This is coming out of human heart, not me. This is coming out of the geometry of the human heart. This is, now that's not inflation, but this is the most powerful and the most profound geometry of the 21st century, absolutely. It was brought in like that. And it's showing that they have a new star, and the star is between the 5 and the 7. The 7 makes part of the 5 into a new star. And that new star that's in the middle, if you go to any of Rudolf Steiner's books that talk about the Egyptian initiate, you'll see that that's not only the chair, the shape of the chair that the Egyptian sits in, but also it is showing that this part right here, being the 5, this is the new part, which will be 7. Now, I don't know if those are two wings or two arms. But I tell you that this human being is going to be developed on seven in the future, not five. We're at five right now. Okay, because we have the choice between good and evil. But in the, in the newness, we'll be seven. And what's happened is once I drew this five pointed star here, all I had to do is use projective geometry. So this is the plane, the horizon plane right here. I extended these lines up here to this circle. There's no way I can do this. There's no way I could figure out two side circles and how far they are apart to do this. I could not have done this. This isn't me. So what happened is that it divided this circle and actually into seven. And when I combined the pentagram as it moved around, it developed this star. So if I look at this, this is the lens right here. When those two come together. So I went and studied the lens of the human eye. I even made it They're somewhere here. Here it is. No, that's not it. But I studied that lens. I see it. I studied that lens, and I found out that this part is looking at the center. As it moves around like this, it's looking at the center, and then as I come around into the seventh circle, it's looking into the periphery. <laughs> so the heart looks at the periphery and the center at the same time, and that's what our meditation should be about, mm -hmm. is being able to see the center and the periphery at the same time. Not get stuck on one other. The heart doesn't like that. It doesn't like to get stuck. He doesn't like to be just a Democrat or just a Republican. <laughs> he likes to look at both of them are wrong. You know? <laughs> so the, the heart likes that, that interaction. Okay, so uh, I made that lens and I found out that that lens, two, three dimensionally, is really two cones. And those two cones are interacting vortexes that cannot happen in nature because one would eliminate the other, but not in the heart. So, I made uh, an inversion of the seven-sided form, and this is what it looks like. This is an inversion of the seven-sided form. This is one of the reasons I knew it was the heart, <coughs> because it has two retrogrades, okay, and it's the love of the other. It's, it's the, the love of, of, of Mary and her child. Okay, this is actually what's going on, okay, in the circulation. And right in the middle of this form is this one. Objectively, scientifically, perfect. What's inside here? This is the flame. I call this the flame of warmth because this is the warmth of the heart. This is the shape, geometrically, of warmth. Not fire. Fire, you can see. You can put a flashlight on fire and there's a shadow. But on warmth, there's no shadow. So geometrically, this is what's inside this. And so I made an artistic grail cup. This is the first grail cup ever designed that something is coming out of it. All throughout the history, a thousand years, people, artists have been making grail cups. But they always had nothing going out of it. It's always about going in. I decided